You ever feel like uh, that that scene in Days of Thunder where the old man Harry is, uh, you know, right before the Daytona 500 and he's talking to the metal yellow car and all of that and pretty much ready to go and then he sees where it's dripping oil on the garage floor and he's like, this is not what I expected out of you. That is the emotions that I have right now with the Airstream. So um, where I'm going with that is that uh, obviously we're getting ready for this big trip to Utah. And uh, yesterday I got it out and got it all washed and filled it with water and all of that. Well, when I was putting it away in the storage unit, the, I wanted to clean the windshield and I wanted to clean the wheels. Um, so as I was cleaning the wheels, I, uh, I did the driver's side and they were fine. And then when I went over to the passenger side and um, I noticed the passenger side wheels were pretty, pretty warm. So then I looked in there with my flashlight and I seen a lot of brake dust. So there's something going on, not sure. This is a 2020 Airstream. Um, it's supposed to have the never lube ba uh, bearings and the never lube adjust brake or never adjust brakes on it. So, um, I know the issue is not with my brake controller, so I just don't know if the left side is way far out of adjustment and it's it's not grabbing, or if the right side is too tight and it's it's grabbing too too much, create too much heat. So um, gonna take it to the shop and pull these wheels off. Our trailer's got less than 5,000 miles on it, I would say, and uh, I'm you know. I've done so much work to this truck and made sure everything is good with the truck that I haven't even really focused on the trailer. And you know, it's a brand new trailer, but just because it's new, I know better than anybody else does that just because it's new doesn't mean that it's good or that we're okay. So, um, I don't know, we're gonna get to the shop. We'll pull the wheels off. We'll get the drums off and get to looking at these brakes. And uh, I'll show I'll show you guys what it's gonna take to, to, get, to get to looking at these, so. We'll see, I'm hoping it's just a simple adjustment. Um, I'm more, I'd rather have issues here than out on the road. So I'm gonna, just when I thought everything was ready to go, me just simply wiping down the wheels, I noticed there was a lot of brake dust on the right side and they were hotter. So there's something going on back there. And uh, so I'm kind of glad that I, I did wash it yesterday. Otherwise I wouldn't have found out. And I just don't wanna have any troubles on the road if I don't have to. So um, we'll uh, get this thing tore apart and see what it's gonna take and figure out to share this video with you guys and hopefully it's a simple deal. All right, here we go. So I just got this side of the trailer jacked up and I don't feel where they're they're grabbing or anything so I don't know they don't seem they don't seem too too tight but uh, I'm gonna pull them off and take a look in behind there and see what we got going on just to be on the safe side Everything looks par, but like I said, this right side of these wind, these things were hot. Um, so it means like I'm gonna pop this cap off and uh, pull this drum off and look inside and make sure we got what we got going on here. All right, so we got the, uh, the snap ring off. And then uh, this is an, an inch and seven sixteen socket that fits on there. Let's 
see if we can try to slide this out. See what we got going on. Okay. Back there. Okay. Quite a bit of uh, brake dust in here, I would say. Um, so the drum's okay, but I noticed a lot of a lot of brake dust on this. I want to make sure we're okay. So I'm gonna get this all cleaned up, and then this has got the cable on it. So these are supposed to be self-adjusting, and the adjuster is down here on the bottom. So we're gonna get that cleaned up, and. Uh, Wanted to make sure that everything looked all right. So anyways, we'll get this all cleaned up and then readjusted. All right, so we got everything cleaned up and uh, everything looks good. So we're gonna slide the drum back up on there there's that put a little anti seize on the spindle nut there a little loctite Okay, so here we go. All right, so that is torqued to 145 foot-pounds via the 145 to 155. Okay, that is good. So I'm gonna put a jack stand underneath here now. Let's see. Right. Try to get underneath there and adjust this brake. Ow. Where is it? There it is. Hear that clicking? You want to go till you got slight drag. It's fucking... A little bit more. Okay, there's two more clicks. And there, I don't want to go much more than that. I'll show you. I got slight, slight drag all the way around now. So I'm good with that. I like that. This one here, you can tell it needs, it needs adjusted. They're out of adjustment on that, out that one. And I'm going to clean it too. So like I said, this one's got, you just go until you get a little bit of drag. You don't want too much. So that one's good. I like that one. Okay, so yesterday when I was cleaning the wheels, I noticed this side had hardly no brake dust and it was cool to the touch. The other side was warm, not like hot, but I want to show you this because I said either something's wrong with the right side or the right side's working and the left side's not working or it's way out of adjustment. So I just got the wheel up off the ground. I'm going to take this and I mean that thing is, it should have stopped by now. Um, I think this side is just so far out of adjustment, it, this side wasn't grabbing um, at all uh, because it it shouldn't spin that many times. I mean, it should have stopped by now. So thinking that just, 
that this side's out of adjustment. So we're gonna, I'm still gonna take it apart. The luck that I have, I'm not even gonna play around, not with the wife and the kids and everything inside the truck. So we're gonna tear this side apart, inspect it, adjust them, and then double check it. So I just wanna show you guys. All right, so I got this side off and um, I know that the brakes gotta be working because I could see brake dust on top of this magnet uh, and brake dust up here. So I know that this side is working. I was afraid that it wasn't working at all, but I know that it is. I just think that this side's way out of adjustment clearly. So we're gonna get it cleaned up and uh, we're gonna get this side adjusted and uh, we're gonna keep going here. So stay tuned guys. All right, everyone. I got one more wheel left over here. Uh, I'm gonna show you now that I got this one clean and adjusted, this one here, I'm gonna show you this back one I got left to do yet. Um, so I'm gonna spin. Uh, so you should be able to see this. So I'm gonna spin that and that. I said that one's way, way, way out of adjustment. So we bought this trailer last year. We took it up to the Black Hills and back. So it's got less than 5,000 miles on it. Um, and uh, I just wanted to, you know, make make sure that everything was fine here. So when we get out in Timbuktu, uh, that we don't have issues in the middle of nowhere um, or anything like that. So uh, as far as tools that you need, the uh, you wouldn't have to necessarily take it all apart uh, to adjust the brakes. Um, but I just wanted to obviously get in there and clean everything. But uh, you're gonna need torque wrench, inch and seven sixteenth socket for the actual spindle nut, um, an adjusting spoon, some snap ring pliers, and then uh, you know, 13 16 socket here. So you know, if you don't have, I mean, it's not real bad, but I mean, if you're not real educated or knowledgeable on trailer stuff, then maybe just take it to an actual uh, trailer trailer shop or. Um, any auto repair mechanic shop should be able to do that for you. Uh, these bearings here are the never loop bearings. Um, I myself, I really like them uh, for the fact that I don't have to repack the bearings and knowing now if this was a boat that'd be different because you know boats you submerge them underwater where this you're not gonna I'd hope you wouldn't submerge it underwater. But uh, anyways, I like these bearings a lot better because you should be able to go 100,000 miles real easy without having any bearing issues and you don't have to repack them or anything like that. So that to me is awesome. You know, uh, that's a personal opinion. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of old school people that like the old school, school larger, you know, in and out or tapered bearing. But with those, uh, you better be greasing those quite often because uh, the number one failure on trailers that I know of for fact is wheel bearings people don't pack them um, or they don't know how to set the backlash on the bearing and they get them too tight or they get them too loose so you just better have somebody that really knows that subject otherwise you are gonna have uh, your vacation is gonna get cut short so anyways we're gonna get this other wheel adjusted here stick around thanks for watching okay so we are all back together here and yeah, so I, uh, I'm, I'm blessed to, that I'm able to do this kind of work, uh, that I have the, all the tools and the resources to do so. Um, so I'm, I'm very thankful for that. And uh, I just, like I said, wanted to show you guys that yesterday caught my attention that I was cleaning the wheels. This side was cool. And then when I went around over here on this side, I noticed this side, it wasn't hot. It wasn't hot, but it was, it was warm. And so, anyways, it uh, it concerned me because I didn't know if if this side was something was jammed on this side or if this side wasn't working at all or or what. So what? So I went a little bit deeper, and I didn't get this on film, but I took pictures where I tore the shoes off of the backing plate on these Dexter axles. They were painted to keep them from getting rusty, and I noticed that the paint was breaking down and was getting becoming very tacky and causing the shoes to stick. Uh, you can see here where they put some white lithium grease to keep things lubed up, but it just wasn't sufficient. And you can see where the paint become really gummy and the shoes weren't releasing. So what I did is I ground down the paint with a Rolock disc on every spot that the shoe would sit on. And I applied some anti-seize to these spots. 
and that helped release the shoes. Once the shoes come out, the electromagnetic would release itself. That's what was causing the problem is that the actual electric magnet was getting stuck and you can see where right there is where it swings that shoe. By grinding the paint down, putting anti-seize on those spots, it will it was allowing the brakes to release so that's what big the big problem was is that the paint on the backing plate of the dexter axles was getting hot and become tacky and when you stepped on the brake the the shoes weren't releasing and they were causing it to get hung up you know one thing i, I do want to talk about is everybody you can get them at uh, home depot or, or any any lowe's home improvement store is get you a, a, a temp gun um, I have one in the truck. I, it's, it's buried right now. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get it out. But um, get yourself a temp gun so that way you can always just you know temp probe your wheels if you're going down the mountains or whatever. And um, I would highly recommend getting you some tire monitor. Uh, get you a tire monitor. You know because not only does it take keep an eye on tire pressure but also temperature. And um, you know if you were to develop an issue with one of the, the brakes that were maybe to hang up, um, it's gonna alert you. And I know firsthand from experience that not with this rig, but with our class A diesel pusher, um, I had an alarm go off and it was for high temperature. And uh, I it was on the tag axle on the driver's side and that thing's got so much torque, there is no way I would have ever felt that. Um, and the, the high temperature alarm went off and so we had pulled over to investigate and i used my temp gun and, and i checked the other wheels to kind of you know get a, an average of what the temperature the running temperature should be and the, the the tag axle in the back the brake was hung up and it and the tire monitor caught it so if anybody's watching this video if you guys don't have a tire monitor system you you need to get one hands down um do will i think that they'll prevent all of your issues no but it may help a lot of situations it helped us i would never run without it anymore um i was able to get underneath the the bus and with a hammer and that had an air can in the the slack adjuster for the air can was jammed so i took a hammer and just kind of hit it up there and unhung that brake but if i would have been going down the road if i would have been going down the road there's no way i would have felt that brake dragging and then you get that wheel really hot you blow out the axle seals, you create a fire, or on a trailer, you could ruin the spindle or, or something. So, I mean, get your get yourself a tire monitor system. They're worth every penny. Um, and I think that'll help a whole lot with, if you have an issue with either temperature or tires that are slowly losing air, is it going to prevent a blowout? No, probably not, um, but, I just wanted to share that experience with you guys that tire monitor is absolutely the way to go. So anyways, I'll get things wrapped up here. I wanna thank everybody for watching another video on the Long Life YouTube channel. Uh, for all the people that have signed up, uh, subscribe. Thank you to you guys that have followed us. Um, if you liked this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs down. I mean, that, haters haters are okay too so if you guys have any comments be sure to put those down below and uh we'll try to keep getting more more uh, videos you know made and, and i know we're a little bit behind but anyways thanks a lot and i hope everybody has a good day and safe travels